Oh boy, I just need a couple of bars and I'm already feeling better. Man, this has been, this has been a day. So I am so looking forward to today's episode. You are of course listening to the Unified CXM Experience. And if you're a regular listener, you know this is our Monday show where we have our special guest, Neha, the breath yogi, who joins me. And we do a little breathing exercises and we have an interesting discussion about who knows what. I've actually wanted to do a show on procrastination for a long time, but I've, I've had a lot of trouble getting around to it. So we're going to try to do that today. <laughs> a little procrastination. Cue. Welcome, Neha. How are you? Thanks. Hi. Good. How are you doing? I'm good. I, I think I didn't introduce myself, though. So that's just kind of the zone I'm in today. So I'm Grad Khan, <laughs> CXO at Sprinkler, as you know. Um, but for everybody else, um, yeah, I've been doing this show for, and we're coming around the corner on a year pretty soon. So that's been, it's been an amazing experience, um, but not as much fun as I have with you every week. So I will say the highlight of my week is, do, you know, doesn't it feel like we did this show like yesterday? Yeah, I, I like, actually do feel like that. <laughs> like, it does feel like that, right? It just mm-hmm. feels like only a day has passed, but that's actually not true. It's been a week. And here we are, another week uh, has gone by. It's amazing. I've been in the office for about a month now here in New York. Granted, I was early. Uh, I, was, I stayed in the office late. I, I was the last ELT member in New York and the last ELT member in the office. And I was in this office right through in, until like the, the, the hottest days of last summer. And then the combination of riding and the overwhelming smell of rotting food in people's uh. drawers that they had left behind. <laughs> and then, of oh, course, they turned the air conditioning off. So the combination uh. of extreme heat, extreme smell, and the ever-present no. danger of getting um, beaten up in the streets, I uh, kind of decided to not do that for a while. But, but I've been back for about a month. It kind of got in here as they started cleaning it out again. And Tony and Sam and team have done an amazing job. The place is... Uh, clean as a whistle, spick and span, uh, new desks and chairs, and everything looks great, smells great. Um, but in the grand reopening of the office was this Monday. Uh, I was, of course, uh, here kind of in the pre-area for, for, I guess, three weeks beforehand, and Tony was awesome. He would let me in. He had to open doors. We put in a new security system, and, of course, I was testing the limits of that system, and uh, you know, got it all, all working now, you know, but, and then at one time, I had, to, I had to come up on the freight elevator, then the freight elevator oh. broke, and we got stuck, <laughs> and then got back down again. And every day, I managed to get in, but it was oh. crazier and crazier every day for a while, and, and now it's just working perfectly, and then we had the grand reopening of the office on Monday, oh. and all week long, uh, there have been maybe one or two people on this floor, nine, and mm-hmm. one person on eight. That's it. Wow. Hundreds mm. of people that used to be here, three are showing up. So, or four, I guess, include myself. So it's pretty quiet in here. One upside, though, they fully stocked the snack room. Ooh. <laughs> and there's a lot of snacks now. Because, you there's know, no there's one no one eat. else eating snacks. <laughs> there's no one eating the snacks. So every time I want a hip pea, there's hip peas. And they've got these new brownie crisps, which are pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, all sorts mm. of stuff. So that's I'm going to enjoy this for a little while. And then I'm sure things will get back to normal. But uh, but you've never really worked in the New York office. You've been up here, right? But you've never worked in here, right? Yeah. I mean, I I was there January, February, and March before okay. lockdown just three times. And... I always had a hard time finding a conference room, so I would always no, end up uh, next to your office, actually, at that time. That little room next to your office and Raji's office is where I would sit. Oh, right. Yeah, right. That little room, yeah. Well, yeah. and you're always welcome to use my office. If I'm not here, which happens quite a bit, you, if you're in New York, mm-hmm. you're welcome to use it anytime. Cool. Awesome. It's a <laughs> tiny bit messy. It's not terrible. It's a lot better than it was before. I got mm. a lot of stuff out of here. I was storing like keyboards and stuff for my daughter. That's all gone. Um, I still have a pile of books on the radiator. So that's, that's like not super fantastic. And I do have a collection of KLM uh, Dutch houses. And, you know, and if you, there is, there's a whole bunch of them. I got them when I would fly on KLM, which, when I was doing a lot of travel. 
and each little house is full of gin. So <laughs> you're having welcome a bad to, day. Welcome to the yeah. gin. <laughs> you, come in my, you can come in my office and you can break into the gin in the collectible China houses from KLM. Uh, I've never actually had one of them. I don't know what it tastes like, but I, I think it's bowls. So I think it's supposed to be pretty good. So, um, all right. So let's um, let's start with something. I, I think we were talking about doing a, a new breath we haven't done mm-hmm. before. Um, and since this is procrastination show, uh, let's do the thing we haven't gotten around to before. So uh, yeah. take us through our starting breath. Okay. So this breath is also called the coffee breath and you can call it procrastination breath because it will help us get over that tendency, you know, the emotional, the emotional roadblocks to actually getting around to the things that we really need to do. So the way we do this is let's sit up nice and tall. Mm-hmm. Come onto the front edge of your chair. I want your spine really nice and tall. Palms are in a loose fist in front of the shoulders. Palms in a loose fist in front of your shoulders. Loose fist in front of your shoulders. What does that mean? Like two fists? So palms in a fist yeah. in front of the shoulders. In front of the shoulders. Oh, like this. Yes. And the, oh, okay, fists, God. Okay. And the fists are facing forward. Okay. I am okay. noting a small note of irritation in your voice, by the way. I'm trying my best here. <laughs> what, what, what? <laughs> you sound like my Pilates instructor. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I said okay. fist. Okay, fist, <laughs> fist, fist. All right, so am I doing okay. it right now? Is this good? Is yeah, this, this, this is good. This right? okay, and just relax the shoulders. So you're not holding the arms out. You do, shoulders are totally relaxed. Elbows yeah. are grazing the side of your ribs. Okay. And so watch me first, and then we'll do it together. So we take a force. Remember, breath. nobody else can see us, right? Only you and I can see each other. So yes. you're going to have to describe it to everyone. Like, I actually don't have you in front of me on my screen. I'm yes. actually looking at a picture of Raji for a deck I'm about to do in about a half an hour. So <laughs> okay. uh, it's a great deck. Okay. Uh, so you have to describe it like no Got one it. can see you. Because mm-hmm. nobody can see you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So everyone sitting with their spine straight, palms in a loose fist in front of your shoulders and fists are facing forward, shoulders are relaxed. We take a forceful breath in through the nose and take our arms up and palms open up. So forceful breath in through the nose, arms go up, palms open and then a forceful breath out through the nose and just let the hands fall to the starting position. Oh, interesting. So forceful breath in, palms go up, uh, palms open, forceful breath out, hands fall to the starting position. So you might need to cleanse your nasal passages. That's okay. Nobody's watching. My nasal passages are very cleansed. Okay. So it's a forceful breath in and a forceful breath out. Okay. And just let the hands fall to the starting position. So back into that loose fist and elbows are touching the sides of the ribs. So you got it. Cool. Yeah. And now I'll use a particular rhythm and we'll do it on the rhythm. Okay. So let's close the eyes, bring your attention inwards and just notice how you're doing mentally, emotionally at the moment. How are you feeling physically? And on my count, through the nose for the coffee breath, breathe in, out. Palms up, down. In, out. Up, down. Open, close. Breathe in, out. Up, down. In, out. Up, eight. In, seven. Up six, in five, in four, breathe in, out, in two, in one, and relax. Keep your eyes closed, place your palms on your thighs, open to the ceiling. Bring your awareness inwards and just notice the impact of the breathing on the body. Maybe there's a gentle 
maybe some tingling in your fingertips. Mm. Notice the impact of the breathing of the mind. Maybe a little bit more alert. A little bit more of a gap between those thoughts. When you're ready, you can open the eyes. So, do you have any questions? And then I want to do it one more time, but I want to give you the chance to ask any questions. I think you got the technique. Let's do it at the end. That was awesome. Okay. Okay. Let's do it at the end. That was great. Actually, I love that. That okay. was a very, 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 very interesting breath. <laughs> yeah. Huh. I feel like doing stuff. Yeah, it's going <laughs> to instantly energize you. Yeah, okay. it's fantastic. Wait, what is, what's going on there? Is it the movement of the arms or is it the, the focus on the nose or... There's lots going on. There's lots yeah. going on out there. So why don't we do it one more time and then we'll talk about it. All right, let's go. Palms in position. So everybody's sitting up nice and tall. Come onto the front edge of your chair. Shoulders are stacked over your hips. Palms in a loose fist in front of the shoulders. Facing forward. Palms are facing forward. Relax the shoulders. Do not tense the shoulders. Shoulders are relaxed. Elbows are gently touching the sides of your ribcage. Take a normal transition breath in. And just breathe out, let it go. And for the coffee breath through the nose, forceful breath in, out. Palms up, down. In, out. Breathe in, out. Forceful breath in, forceful breath out. In, out. Open, close. In, down, up, down, open, close, in, eight, in, seven, in, six, in, five, in, four, in, three, in, two, in, one, and relax. Place your palms on your thighs, open to the ceiling. Body still, attention inwards, and just notice the brisk flow of energy in your body, the sensations in the fingertips, arms, maybe even in the shoulders and neck region. Notice alertness. The mind is a little bit more alert and calm at the same time. And maybe there's a pleasant stillness inside. Notice the sensations, if any, in your chest region. And when you're ready, you can slowly open the eyes. Wow. I almost feel like slightly lightheaded too. Am I hyperventilating <laughs> a bit when I do that? I think so. Um, not really. Like, unless you're doing it too fast. Maybe. So it's very vigorous. If you're um, feeling a little lightheaded, it also could be because you're dehydrated. Well, it's possible. It's hot here. All right. Well, that was amazing. Let's talk about procrastination. Okay. So it's something I, I hear people talk about a lot. Mm -hmm. And I feel like people are talking about it more lately. And I, I, that's, that, it could be just, I don't have a scientific study on that, so I'm always a little bit nervous about proclaiming trends when they don't exist. But I don't know, picking it up a lot, I'm pretty good at synthesizing stuff and there's just a lot of articles about it, a lot of people talking about it. I think there's something about being at home all the time, same mm -hmm. environment, same stimuli or lack of stimuli. I'm wondering if people are starting to struggle to get to things and they're sort of getting frustrated by it. So first of all, do you agree with me? Do you, do you feel like you're hearing more about it as well? Yeah, and yes and no. I, I wouldn't say it's been like, oh, wow, everybody's talking about procrastination. It hasn't been that kind of a realization for me but you can just throw uh, me a bone on that one eh? <laughs> <laughs> you, can just, you, know, you, you okay. can also just say yeah grad that's a 
That's an excellent point. I'm seeing it everywhere. You're right. Uh, okay, let's say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't be right. Now you wouldn't be, it wouldn't be real. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. Well, okay. Well, like I said, I'm always a little bit nervous about proclaiming trends because I don't have any data. But uh, yeah. <laughs> that's like, all right. Let's just let's just let's assume that everyone's talking about procrastination just as much as they ever did. Um, what is procrastination in your mind, and what do you think causes it? Because it actually can cause people to be extremely uncomfortable. You know, people are literally like, I know I have to start mm. this right now. I know I have to get it done. I know I have to get to this. I can't get to it. I'm doing something else. Some, you know, not something because I have to. I'm doing something else because I don't want to get to the thing I have to get to. What, what is that in your mind? And where, where, where do you see that with your customers and clients? I think I see it mainly when they know things are good to do. Like, yeah, I should be doing my practices every day, but they still don't find time for it. Right? Oh, I'll do yeah. it. Okay. I'll do it yeah. at nine... I mean, if you see some of my clients, they'll like, I'm messaging back and forth with them since like 6.30 a.m. Okay, it's 6.30. Okay, 7. And then it's like, okay, 9. Oh, I had no idea. My meeting started at 9 instead of 10. So they don't find the time in, sp- in spite of having the best of, um, you know, intentions. So just like with everything else, there's not like one factor that, is true for everyone, right? It could be different reasons for different people. For some, it could just be plain laziness. And uh, there are some other reasons for being lazy. I'm always hesitant on lazy. That's a tough word. Like, I mean... That's a really judgy word. That that word, lazy, man, that's a... I don't... I'm not sure I ever use that word. I'm not sure I... I'm not sure I've maybe ever used it, but I certainly haven't used it in the last three or four decades. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a hard word to use. Yeah. It and doesn't that's it feel saying, like saying someone's lazy just feels like so almost fundamentally judgmental. It's like, there's and there's no way to solve it is a little bit of the dot, dot, dot on that one. And I don't think people no, are lazy. I mean, like they actually, procrastinators get a lot of stuff done. They just know the thing they're supposed to do. See, like, again, like I said, there are many reasons and it could be different for different people. Right. So I'm not saying that everybody's lazy. And and again, I think people have a certain understanding or a perception of the word lazy. And in my dictionary, it's neither positive, it's neither negative. Like according to the science of Ayurveda, okay, Ayur means life and Veda means science. Actually, if the earth element is more dominant and out of balance in your body, it is going to make it hard for you to move. Wow, you do. What does that mean? Yeah, I don't want to go. I, I, I was like, okay, <laughs> where, where he's taking that it? Door. No, no, you, you, <laughs> not, you just opened that door. You kicked it open. We were going down that path. So, okay, from what, my what perspective, element in the body. What are we talking about here? So, according to Ayurveda, okay, and this is a Wait, five, so slow that down a little bit. So, can you spell that or a y u r v e d. A, Ayurveda. So Ayur means life and Veda means science. So Ayurveda is almost 5,000 years old and it's the sister science of yoga. What happened 5,000 years ago? Like seriously, yoga, like all this stuff got invented 5,000 years ago. Was it like just a super awesome time to be alive or what was going on? And then what happened to all that stuff? No, and it like it got cognized and then it got written. But anyway, the point is that <laughs> according to Ayurveda, everything in this universe is made of five elements. Modern hmm. medicine is just coming to the understanding that, oh, the mind and the body are connected. This work has happened in the last two decades more than like till then it was considered if you talk to any of the top neuro neuroscientists, they'd be like, oh, no, brain is not in connection with the body. But from the perspective of Ayurveda, since time immemorial, the body, the human being was always seen as a composition of mind, body, and soul. What are the and five elements? I thought there were just the four five elements. Ele- the five elements are water, yeah. earth, yeah. air, fire, yeah. fire, and space. Space? Wow. Have you seen the movie The Fifth Element? That's one of my favorite movies of all time. I don't, I, you know, I have to start watching movies to be on oh, these podcasts. You seen the fifth element? I, I don't oh, watch movies. I need gosh. to, I, I do you watch have movies, such but. such an amazing 1997 film with Bruce Willis and Mila Jovovich in her first starring role. 
I'm a huge Mila Jovovich fan. Like, who is huge Mila? Huge. I need Mila to Jovovich see her. Fan. I want to Google I've seen her. I've seen every Resident Evil movie like twelve times. Um, but yeah, she plays the Fifth Element. It's not space. It's Mila Jovovich. That's what I thought you were going to say when you said space. You surprised <laughs> me. I thought you were going to say the Fifth Element is Mila Jovovich. I thought that's pretty uh, cool. I didn't know she was around five thousand years ago, but whatever. <laughs> she looks. She looks good for five thousand years old. Also, by the way, Canadian. Mm. Yeah. Mm. No. But you're not a Canadian no. anymore. Not anymore, but I was Canadian for a long time. And, you know, anyway, she, she's like super badass. Anyway, mm. so that's a mm. great movie. It's also got um, Chris Tucker in it in this incredible role. Luke Perry's in it. Gary Oldman. Like, it's, a, it's one of the greatest science fiction movies ever okay, made. Okay, I'm going to watch it this I'm gonna weekend. Get the, uh, that, that, I'm going to get that one. for No, no, I'm going to get it for you. Ah. you. You need to see The Fifth Element. It'll tie into all the stuff you're saying. You'll see what I mean. Okay. All right, so, so there's five elements. Space. Yeah. Space is what? I mean, space like outer space or space like just the air? S- but no, we already said air, right? Yeah, space. Everything exists in space. Like, Interesting. And like vacuum, you know? Okay. Like, yeah, so that okay. is space. Okay. That, that's a fundamental five elements. Everything, when, when, when this body decomposes, it's going to get decomposed into these five elements. So according to Ayurveda, every person has an inherent body type based on the natural composition of the body. So for example, for me, I'm a fire dominant person, which means that there are certain inherent characteristics and traits, which mean it makes me very passionate. It makes me very like action oriented i have good digestion i like hot and spicy stuff because i'm fiery mm. and that's not good for me because if i eat too much fire fiery stuff then it's going to make my body even more heated as opposed to someone like my brother who's more earth element dominant which is like they usually have like a solid body uh they're more calm they're it, it's always like everything goes with them. They're the kind of people who always sit and within, he reads encyclopedias in his free time and loves a bag of chips and his, uh, you know, TV. So it's just inherent. That's his natural tendency. And then there how do you the, figure out what you are? Like how, is there do you do yeah, some yeah. kind of analysis? Yes, I can send you a link. Uh, now they have these quizzes online and you can figure out what is your natural oh, yeah. natural comp- composition and then they're the people who are air dominant so they are those people who can eat boatloads of stuff and never put a, any tiny bit of weight on like hey, that's not me. yeah i had a friend yeah, like that she was like keep eating and i yeah, put those on are weight very irritating people i don't like very those irritating very people yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like oh so anyway but they're also spaced out they are the people who can just be sitting and be daydreaming all the time because the quality of air is just light and moves right so according to ayurveda when somebody it's we all have all the five elements but as seasons change toxins accumulate in the body and that can bring about an imbalance in these elements. And when the mm. earth element becomes dominant, it shows up as because earth is very stable. It's grounded. It doesn't move. Right. So it causes you to become a little lazy. Wow. This is so deep. I didn't know you even had this like whole thing going on. This is great. <laughs> you know, it's, I got I to gotta get this survey because I don't know what I am. Let me put I'm, it in there. I'm going to say with a fair amount of um, certainty that my fiance is, is there like fire plus? Is there like an yes. extra? Okay, so there's she's one double dominant. Fire. She's double fire. <laughs> <laughs> she's double fire. <laughs> double fire. Oh, and is there like is there like guidance on what what people should go with? Like, yes. You know, a fire should never marry a water or something like that. Or how does that oh, all yeah. play out? Oh, oh yeah. Oh my God! Like, you could you could look at people's charts and so see. Oh, fires, you gotta help me out here. So we still we still got lots of time before the wedding. So we we should check this out. Just make sure everything's going in the right direction. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We should do more than just the dosha match. We should talk about astrology. And there's wow. even more mystical I'm stuff. I'm going to have so much fun in the next couple of weeks. This is great. I'll just sit down with them and say, I don't know if you've heard hey, of Rachel, the Akashic. I got good news and I got bad news. <laughs> <laughs> Good news is we got a bunch of free astrology uh, Akashic and, you know, records. element work here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Uh, oh wow! No. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is for cool. me, for me, necessarily lazy doesn't mean negative. Okay, it's just well, so. A how quality. do you fix that? So I've got I got too much earth element going on. Yeah. So uh, well, well, I'm having so trouble saying the people, word lazy, but I'll say lazy. So I've got so, too much earth element, so I'm I'm procrastinating. I'm not getting to stuff I should be getting to. How do I fix that? How do I get that earth element out? Or what's the thing I need to do to fix that problem? Maybe do some. They need to do activities that will increase the fire element in them. So things mm, okay. like have ha- like having a little bit more spice in their food, doing hot yoga, cardio, those kind of things. Okay. Uh, how, about, how about dating someone who's double fire? Because I mean, I'd say I find that fairly stimulating as well. <laughs> 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 it's not that dating, many of them. That's the problem. Dating. I'm keeping her to my. I'm keeping her to myself. But still, wow. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, so, so anyway, like so whole, laziness. So where, where can people find this? If people want to read more about it or dig into it, like do so, some research. Uh, there's this really amazing site. It's called Banyan Botanicals. I just put it in the chat here for you. I well, sent the okay, link, they, link to the Our, care, our listeners can't see that. So Banyan so spelled. Banyan, but B-A-N-Y-A-N Botanicals. Okay. B-O-T-A-N-I. C A L S. Okay, but mm-hmm. Banyan Botanicals. That sounds yes. that sounds pretty straightforward. Okay. Uh huh. I think a Banyan so, tree is what the Swiss Family Robinson treehouse is made in, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. That's another movie we need to add to the list. I mean, okay. I I need to like <laughs> sit with you and <laughs> get all. The, here, yeah. I should start watching <laughs> all the movies. Absolutely. Uh, oh man, I'm just gonna keep throwing them at you. You know that, right? So at some point, you're just gonna have to give in <laughs> and start watching a movie every what? once in a while. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. All right. So right. anyway, okay, laziness so is just cool. one. It's just one. The other reason. And so you don't is think also- of it as a personality defect. You think no. of it as a, yeah. an element uh, imbalance that can be fixed by. By doing a bunch of different things. I, I yeah. like that, you know, because I think a lot of people who procrastinate a lot, maybe they're suffering from this imbalance, but they often tend to blame it on themselves. They're like, I'm lazy. I'm yeah. this. I'm that. I'm bad. I'm something's wrong with me. Like there's and people can really beat themselves up. Mm-hmm. And as procrastination gets worse and they struggle to get to the thing and then they start beating themselves up even more, the whole thing turns into a bit of a vicious cycle. I've yeah. actually seen people get into a pretty rough spot personally because they're just so hard on themselves because they're struggling to finish their taxes or clean up their room or whatever they need to do, right? So mm-hmm. uh, I do think it's a bit of, bit of an issue. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and, and I also, this is a different topic, but I don't inherently agree with the whole concept of labeling people and putting them into boxes because that, that's very rigid, you know, whereas we're all very capable of change and things change all the time. So anyway, this is natural. This is something that happens naturally when when seasons change, body has to adjust and these toxins can build up in the body. So that's just one of the reasons. The other reason could also be that somebody's inherently just afraid of failure. Like it's an overwhelming task. Like I have to finish the certification exam. Oh right. God, I have to learn a lot. And maybe it's also stemming from that lack of energy. Maybe you're just exhausted. I see this in a lot of my male clients where actually they're just being very hard on themselves. They're exhausted. They'll procrastinate because then in the end, they'll just have like five, you know, like the minimum amount of time to do it. So then they can't, blame themselves for not doing the best thing of for it it's just like oh i only have this much time and this is the best but actually they're just kind of like they need to be easy on themselves and just be you know take the time to replenish their energy levels and then it could also be things like adhd or something like that depression causes you to not want to do anything like this physical structural changes in your brain so there could be many reasons but If you take a yogic perspective on it, it boils down to self-discipline. And self-discipline is Mm, not... Sounds like work. It sounds like work. It's something... It's discipline. (laughs) It's discipline we impose on ourselves. Okay? So, Mm -hmm. for the long-term good. So, there's no discipline needed to watch movies. There's no discipline needed to go shopping. There's no discipline needed to do the things you enjoy. Discipline comes in when you are able to regulate yourself for the long-term benefit. 
mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and these mm-hmm. are things that may not be so enjoyable in the immediate near term ti- on a time scale but they'll give you long lasting benefits in the long term and that is also something that people forget right like they almost have this dissociation with themselves their future self like oh this is a problem i'll have 10 years from now and that's when i'll tackle it right like right now it's okay i'm going to work 18 hours a day not going to sleep whereas we know that lack of sleep is actually causing the brain to have disconnections you know like it's bringing your cognitive function down like anything uh but hey it's a problem when when i start losing my memory is when then i'll i'll tackle it at that time right now i just have to interesting it's it's like being having having that sort of self imposed discipline for the long term good and um and that also well, a, i think there's a little thing to this fear thing i think you talk about it's a big one have you ever seen back to the future yes Yeah, oh, you have. Wow. <laughs> bingo. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's a bingo. That's another movie quote. Uh that is cool. Okay, so you've seen Back to the Future. So, you know who Marty McFly is, right? Um Marty McFly is sort of the main character played by Michael J. Fox. And at the very beginning of the film, he's he's trying out for the school band for the concert. If mm-hmm. you remember that. And mm-hmm. and the main title track song Power of Love is done by Huey Lewis in the news and Huey Lewis himself is actually one of the teachers deciding and he's the one that says that you're just too darn loud. And so Michael J Fox is walking with his girlfriend and uh and so as he's he's sort of walking with his uh girlfriend and they're sort of talking about sort of you know what he's going to do next and stuff like that. And uh in the first movie his girlfriend was played by Claudia Wells and then she was replaced by Elizabeth Shue in the next two movies because Claudia Wells uh, dropped out of acting to take care of some family business so anyway so but the, the point is he says to her you know I, I he hasn't sent in his demo tape to the record label yet and so you know Claudia Wells playing Jennifer Parker says well why not and Michael J Fox is playing Marty McFly says I just don't know if I can handle that kind of rejection I love that line mm-hmm. right and so sometimes people procrastinate on things because they don't want the answer Yeah. Or and, it's uh, so they don't get to it because they don't want the answer because mm. once the answer happens then that's final like they're not in it's not there's always a possibility mm. as long as you haven't actually submitted. As soon as you submit then you're in or out and that is either going to happen or not happen and the future changes suddenly and I think that's there's a lot of that with people and my mm-hmm. point is that you know you have to keep trying otherwise you'll never happen and you know you miss 100% of the shots you don't take yeah and and i would say you know it's like it's okay to be having that fear but do it anyway and one way to get around it is just kind of like breaking it all down into like simple steps you know yeah. simple steps and and i i was caught up in my marriage because of fear of disappointing my you know disappointing my parents so i i know it was it's very very real but i think the goal is you know you eventually get to it when you can't uh, pro- procrastinate yeah. anymore but then it's at comes at a huge cost so i think the I don't know what my excuse was. I don't even have that excuse. That's a good one. I don't, I got I got to come up with something. <laughs> no, but it may be because see nobody gets into things with the idea of ending them. It's hard. No, nah, you're right. You're right. You know, it's hard, hard. And, and quite expensive. Um all right. So <laughs> <I'm quite laughs> I'm sorry. Expensive. I'm going in that direction here. So uh so let's okay. uh let's I I speaking of um doing things, I am going to be um talking about the sprinkler vision and mission. at our customer advisory board meeting which Ooh. is starting in 2 minutes. Okay. And so we're going to wrap today but that was an unexpectedly awesome session. And we did two breaths up front so I think we're just going to yeah. we're just going to wrap the show today and okay. we'll be back next week with something else. I don't know I don't know what we'll talk about next week but 
Maybe we could follow <laughs> up on this Banyan botanical stuff. Like that. Oh, maybe you we should could take do... the quiz and then we can talk about yeah, it. Yeah, can we do it live? Like, can we yeah. do like I'll get I'll get my fiance to do the quiz and I'll do the quiz and you can just like see if we're a match, like right live on the air in the <laughs> yeah. podcast. That would be so yeah. amazing. Sure. Okay. I, I, that's let's do that. Let's do that. We'll make that so Randy, you got that? That'll be our plan for next week. Which will be, uh, let's, I want to dig into this elemental stuff. It sounds like fun. And in the meantime, I'll get you the fifth element and you can watch that. Cool. All right. So, Neha, Thank any you. last words? No, I just want to say if you find yourself, anybody listening, you find yourself procrastinating, I just want you to know that it's okay. It happens to all of us at some point in our life. Just the first step to, to take is to just figure out what the underlying cause is. And sometimes just journaling writing your thoughts down, what could be the possible causes can really bring some clarity. And once we know what the cause is, we can tackle it. And you know, I'll add, and stop being so damn lazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if laziness oh God, comes up, <laughs> no, and if the laziness comes up, you do the coffee breath, the procrastination breath. Yeah, the coffee breath. breath was amazing. I'm still tingling. I don't know what's going <laughs> on tingling. here. But, uh, I'm potentially, is that a bad sign? No, I did that sign. That's uh, fine. <laughs> hello, 911. Let me do the coffee breath. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh uh, my gosh. We gotta, I gotta stop this. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta be all serious in about two minutes for our customers. Okay. So Neha, this was amazing. <laughs> I had so much fun today. Uh, and uh, I'm going to sign off for the unified CXM experience. I'm Grad Khan, CXO at Sprinkler with my weekly guest and my special guest star, Neha, the breath yogi. And we were doing coffee breaths today and talking about procrastination and we will be back next week and I'll be back next time.